around about 83, 84, 1983, 84. At that time, they only used the villager as a border. And they forced them to carry their arms, ammunition, and supplies. This is in that, at that time. And then they asked the villager to help them or to force them to work for, uh, what shall I say, one month or two months, uh, and then continue with operation. So, in when it's come to 1985, 86, 87, 88, I think that they didn't release the border anymore. They tried to bring the villagers along with them after they finished the operation. So it was very hard time for the villagers. So villagers are scarce with the fighting, so they run away from that area. This is in, we can say, in the early 90s. In 90, and then the situation changed because they attacked the, our military post and then they put their position in front of all our military position and then they starting, you know, to give more pressure to the villagers. Not only giving, uh, asking them a porter or forcing them a porter, they also asked them for some supplies, some food stuff, some cash. And then at the last stage, we can see that in two, early of 2000, at that time, there's no strong, or we can say, military post from our side. But they deploy a lot of troops in that area. And then with our guerrilla tactic, they force the village to a relocation site. And then it's easy for them to get the labor. It's easy for them to take all their belongings from their own village. And then in this way, you know, the people are targeted, not the, I mean, the armed groups. And they put the order that they ask people to relocate in that area, so and so date. They give the ultimatum date. If people cannot you know, relocate in time, they were shot inside. They were accused as they are the supporter or the uh, the insurgent. So in this way, people, this abuses are happen everywhere. And people who live inside the forced relocation, <coughs> they didn't have uh, you know, a chance to going back to their own field or to all the people in this area, they are farmers, so they have to go back to their farm or to their field. So they have to ask permission from the SPDC authorities. Uh, in this way, you know, people are not happy uh, to stay under this condition. So they left the relocation site. When the SPDC ordered them, they don't want to go. In this way, you know, they lose all their uh, belonging or properties. And then the livestock were looted or shoot by the regime. And then the population also, you know, were, I think that, you know, the women were raped, uh, the elders were beaten. So uh, people don't want to stay in their own land and then trying to cross the border, trying to get shelter and coming to the refugee camp. They see this population at the border area to support the insurgent. So they target it, they make it very clear. If you would like to stay under their control, you can go back. But people don't like to stay under their control, they are, they are not free. So that's why 
they try to flee from their forced relocated areas. Most of the human rights we can see nowadays is ethnic cleansing. That it's in one word, I think that it can cover the whole human rights abuses mm -hmm. because when people are forced to go or forced to walk at a re re relocation site, I think that you know, people have to leave their home village. They cannot come back to their village anymore. Their villages became the military barrack or military post or burned down. So people didn't have a chance to do their own living inside that relocation site. So it's very hard for them. People don't want to stay. Some flee to the border area and became refi refugees. Some became the internally displaced people. Some going back to the city. This is what happened to all the area, not only with the Korean. Are you personally in exile from Burma? What would happen if, if uh, the government caught you somewhere wandering around? I think that, you know, they, they have already, I mean, what shall I say, uh, know the people from the KNU leadership, and then they label them, these are the insurgents. So if they caught me, they can put me on trial and then give sentence. Would, would they put you on trial and sentence you, or would they do something? Like if, if it is, you know, me? if it is in a city, I think that uh, you put in jail. But in the front line area, uh, you cannot grant you your you're just, yeah, you're looking at being killed yes. or tortured. Sure, sure.